whether one does vertical caving just because they enjoy going up and down a rope, or because pits and climbs always get in the way of exploring a cave, or both, one must learn the proper techniques in order to vertical cave in a safe and efficient manner. When caving, the most common feature encountered that requires knowledge of vertical techniques is the pit. Getting down is usually pretty easy, but it does require a fair amount of knowledge in order to do it safely. But if one goes down, it is usually necessary to get back up. Getting back up the rope is the main subject of this video. This program is intended to be an introduction to the different techniques and rigs that are used around the world to ascend a rope. The program will start out with how to set up a climbing rope for training with a heavy emphasis on safety. Then we will cover the workings of different climbing systems such as the frog system, knots, the rope walker and others. Important aspects of each system will be described including how to use them in a safe and an efficient manner. Let's start with how to set up a climbing rope for training purposes. Keep in mind that the same principles apply whether training indoors or training outside in a tree or on a cliff. Remember, safety should always be your first concern. When setting up a rope for training, always rig it with a rack or other descent control device at the top station. Be sure to leave enough rope at the top station so you can lower the climber the full distance in case there are problems or difficulties. By threading the rope through a pulley and then using the rack to feed the rope, one can climb for a distance much greater than the height between the ground and the pulley. This is the method used for vertical contests that makes it very easy to do a 100 meter climb in a gymnasium or a tree. Just make sure to leave enough rope behind the rack to let the racer down when finished. It usually takes two people to help the climber on the rope. One is needed to handle the rack and feed the rope if necessary, while the other should be stationed at the bottom of the rope to belay or to hold the rope tight as the trainee or racer climbs. If you are practicing on a cliff, the bottom person should always wear a helmet. Now that we've seen how one might train for doing vertical caving, let's look at the different kinds of ascending systems one might train for. The most popular climbing system in the world is the frog system. Almost all those who climb in Europe use this system. One of the advantages to the frog system is that it is very easy to put on and take off. This makes the frog ideal for caves which have multiple drops, rebelays, and other obstacles. There are two primary ascenders that advance the climber's progress. First is the chest ascender, such as a crow, connected to the half round at the waist belt of the seat harness. The second is the upper ascender, which is also attached to the half round by use of a long cow's tail. Also attached to the bottom of the upper ascender is the long cord for the foot loops. The length of the foot loop cord is critical. As the climber stands up, the crow should rise to meet the upper ascender. Adjust the length of this cord until they meet while climbing. Climbing with a frog requires the climber to pinch the climbing rope between their feet, kick their legs and feet under their butt, and rise up vertically. The rope should go from the chest ascender straight down between the legs and the feet. This motion maximizes the climber's efficiency. The frog system is one of the more popular systems to use in climbing contests held at various caving events, including the NSS convention. The simplicity of the frog system and the ease of its use is evident when watching cavers compete during these contests. The frog system is not the only climbing technique that uses the sit-stand method. Another commonly used sit-stand method is called Texas climbing. It involves a waist-connected ascender using a lanyard and either one or two similar foot connections. In this case, one foot loop is being used. And here, two foot loops are being used. 
Almost every climbing system, regardless of its complexity, will break down to a basic Texas rig and allow the user to perform changeovers and other maneuvers that are so often necessary. Finally, in a category by themselves, you'll find knots. The three knot climbing system is very similar to the Texas system. Two knots are connected to the feet, while a third is connected to the seat harness. This is not the classic three knot system, which uses a well padded chest harness instead of the seat harness. When ascending, the climber moves each foot knot individually. He then stands moving the third knot up. Commonly, either prussics or helical knots are used. Each of them have their unique challenges. These are prussic knots. Here is an example of helical knots being used. Rope walking is the other primary category of ascending. There are several ways to walk up a rope, but the most common method is with the double bungee rope walker. The rope walker is probably the only system that caters to all body types and sizes. Some cavers use a single bungee system. Only the knee ascender is assisted with the use of a bungee cord using this method. There are numerous configurations, but few people have found a way to climb using a single bungee that doesn't include the use of the Gibbs ascender. Gibbs ascenders inconveniently require the use of two hands to put them on and take them off the rope. Because of these problems, you will concentrate on the double bungee system. This system is called a rope walker because the knee and foot ascenders are positioned so the user can cross their feet when climbing, much like one would walk up stairs. The name double bungee is derived from the fact that the bungee cord is attached to both ascenders. One end of the bungee cord is attached to the top of the foot ascender, while the other end is connected to the top of the knee ascender. The middle of the bungee cord goes through a pulley attached to the chest harness. Because of the stretch in the bungee cord, it pulls the ascenders up the rope with each step that the climber takes. The chest roller's importance cannot be overemphasized. Its position, comfort, and convenience of use are all critical parts to the smooth operation of the system. A climber must wear the chest box high on their chest so the body hangs as vertically as possible. This maximizes the system's efficiency. Having the legs pushed straight down allows the climber to rise efficiently up the rope. The last commonly used rope walker that will be discussed here is the Mitchell climbing system. Two ascenders connected with cords extend to each foot. The long foot cord passes through one of the chest rollers, while the rope passes through the other. The Mitchell system is the only climbing system that down climbs, as well as up climbs, efficiently. This is very useful for someone who requires constant repositioning while on rope, such as a photographer. To enjoy this down climbing feature, only two ascenders commonly sold work well. CMI Ultra Ascenders and Jumars. They both have straight teeth which minimizes the chance of snagging nylon rope fibers during the down climbing process. But even more important is the fact that there is a large hole at the top which allows the gloved or ungloved finger to reach in and hold the ascender while the climber's thumb depresses the cam. This is what makes it so easy to down climb and self-start with the Mitchell system. 
thinner climbers are best for this system. Heavier users tend to hang too far off a of vertical, which causes their ascent step to become very ineffective. Overall, the Mitchell Rope Walker is one of the more simple systems around and affords unparalleled ease of use, precision, and climbing convenience. Ascending rope is an important part of the vertical experience. Once a caber has rappelled into the cave or down the pit, more than likely it will be necessary to ascend the rope in order to get out. As with almost any skill, style, technique, and efficiency become learned skills as a climber perfects the basics and moves on with their skills to become more proficient. Single rope techniques have proven to be a safe and effective way to travel in and out of places that before were often inaccessible. Being able to move through such extraordinary places in nature is a gift that is the legacy handed down from the many pioneers that have honed the methods that are so commonly used today.